Welcome back to A20. In this uh, section, we want to look at light. What is it and how does it propagate? In this video specifically, I give you a little bit of a preview of 802. And I don't do this in a very pedagogical way. I just give you some information. Okay. So if you, you know, study 802, we'll see Maxwell equations are being developed in there. We look at Maxwell equations for an electric and a magnetic field, E and B, in vacuum. We can rewrite the Maxwell equations and we find wave equations. The solutions of the wave equations, as the name tells you, are waves. So what we are looking at here is we want to describe the propagation of electric and magnetic fields in vacuum. Um, in this situation, this is uh, maybe at some time t equals zero. We have an electric field in this point P here and a magnetic field. The electric field points into the y direction, the magnetic field into the z direction. And what's, what those equations now describe is how the wave propagates in space and in time. And it, you know, you can already, you know, tell from the name wave equation, if the solutions of this equation, this um, differential equation are sines and cosines. So one solution here is uh, EY equal to E naught times cosine KX minus omega T. Okay. We find then that the speed in which the wave propagates, you pick one uh, peak of a wave and you see how it propagates, one point of the wave and see how it propagates. The speed in which it propagates is the speed of light, C. And you can find C here through those constants in those, um, in those Maxwell equations, in the wave equations. Find C is one over square root epsilon naught and mu naught. The permittivity and the permeability, um, the product of the two gives you the speed of light. Great. So if you look at this some more um, and connect to the wave, uh, Maxwell equation, the Lorentz force, um, again, as a reminder for those who had had 802 already, um, the force on a charged particle in an electric magnetic field is given by Q times E plus Q times V cos B. If you have two charges, the force between those two charges is the product of the two divided by R square um, times one over four pi epsilon naught. Again, the very same constant. And the force between two wires, this current, um, current I1 and current I2, uh, is equal to the product of the two currents divided by R times L, the length of the, of the, of the wires, um, times mu naught over two pi. So this is fantastic because now you can calculate the speed of light by just measuring the forces between charges and currents and wires. Fantastic. All right, the value of C is also very interesting. It's large, very large. Three times 10 to the eight meters per second. So just let this sink in. You know, we as humans, we move with a few meters per second. Light travels with you know a, a few a few uh, nanoseconds it's, it's needed for light to travel about one meter. It takes us one second. Okay, um, let's stop the video here. The next thing I want to do is an exercise. I want to have you play with this differential equation and with the solutions of the differential equation. So the challenge or the exercise is to show um, that if you have a function which you can write as uh, F naught, which is an arbitrary function, which is a, a function of x minus ct, those functions, regardless in how they look like, are solutions of this differential equation. Note that I replaced our constant epsilon naught and mu naught now with one over c squared. So F naught can really be an arbitrary function. Uh, you need to be able to build the derivative. So, okay. So I, I do this function here. Um, as a function of x for some time equal t zero, okay? And then I do the same function uh, for time t equal, t, equal, t equal one. And so you can, from this picture, see that the delta x over delta t is minus t in this case. So my uh, function, my wave is moving with the speed of light in minus direction. All right, so I want you to show that this kind of equation um, 
of a solve C the wave equation. Okay, so I would like you to do this and stop the video. I'll show you the solution now. So the way to approach it is simply applying the chain rule. And that might be something you want to remind yourself of. So if I do this, I uh, define this little helper function here. U is equal x minus ct. Um, this makes our function a function of u, which is itself a function of x and t. So if I build the derivative with x, I have this df of u, the u times the u dx. Okay, if I build the second derivative, um, there's a product here I have to take care of. So I find that these, these is the second derivative of f of, of f of u here um, times the u dx squared. And then I have to add the f to u times second derivative of u. Okay. This follows very similar for the derivative of t. And then I can investigate what we find. So my du dx is equal to one, right? Du dx, if I build the derivative of x minus ct, this x, I find one. If I do the same with t, I find minus c. Okay, I will use this. Second derivatives of u on x and t are all zero. Okay, if I put this in now in my equation, I find Second derivative of f with u is uh, of one minus um, c. Oh, sorry, one minus one over c square times c square is equal to zero. And since this is always zero, we have just proven that uh, any sort of function which I can build the derivative of, um, which is of the form. Sorry, which is of the form x minus ct uh, solves the equation. 